Today I'm going to be reviewing the Derwent watercolor pencils, plus doing a demonstration with these pencils. Find out if these are going to be a good choice for you. A year ago Derwent sent me these pencils and I just never got around to, to playing with them until recently and now I'm kind of kicking myself. Why did I wait so long? And just for transparency this is not a sponsored video but the pencils were given to me by Derwent. So all of the opinions in this video are my own. Now I am not a watercolor artist so I don't really have a lot to compare this to other than can these accomplish what I want in my own artwork, but I can't compare them to a lot of other pencils. The only other time that I've really used watercolor pencils were with Smart Art Box about a year ago. I did this project with a giraffe with the Art Alternatives watercolor pencils. Now those were very, very muted in color. They weren't highly pigmented. So I honestly expected the same with these. I was shocked. The color pigment of these is gorgeous. I had no problem getting things to be as dark or as light, anything that I wanted. These pencils did for me very, very well. I was really, honestly, completely surprised by that. Now another huge bonus to me on these pencils is the cost. These ones, when you compare them with other pencils that have a good reputation, again, I've not tried them myself, I will be reviewing other pencils in the future, but when you look at other reviews as far as pencils that have nice pigmentation and do what these did, these ones, are on the low end price wise. If you go to an art supplier online like dickblick.com, they run $109 for the set of 72. If you get them in the metal tin, if you get them in the wood box, they are 178, at least at the time of recording this video. When I checked the prices on Amazon, it was a little bit less to get the tin over there, but the wood box, check, always watch the prices on Amazon. This has not a whole lot to do with these pencils, but just a, a tip for you when you're buying your art supplies, check the prices on Amazon because one day they may be a great price, like the one in the wood box, which I do recommend. I love Derwin's wood boxes. I have it in their ink tents and they are so wonderful. But if you get the wood box with them, or at least if you bought that a couple of weeks ago when I was checking the prices, they ran about $73. It was less to get the wood box than it was to get the tent, tin, which was crazy. Now it's up to $198. It's a lot more. It's more to get it on Amazon than it is from Dick Blake. Always check your prices, whether you're buying from Amazon or an art supply store. Don't assume the first price you see is the only price you're going to get. Now, another great thing about these pencils, you can buy them open stock. That for me is very, very important in an art supply that I think I'm going to use a lot. Actually, after finishing this project, I loved the white pencil so much, which you'll hear me rave about and see why once we get into the tutorial. I bought a bunch of those when I placed a recent order on Jer no, Dick Blick. I loved them a lot. But open stock, they run $1.46 each. I think you can get a bit of a discount if you buy more than a certain amount, but you can get them open stock. So if you're going through a color faster than your other ones, you don't have to just replace your whole set. And a lot of the pencils that I've seen, especially the lower end pencils or bargain brands, you have to buy them in sets and you don't this way. You can get your initial set and then replace them individually as needed, which for me is very, very important. If I cannot get something open stock, I'm not spending any money on the set. I mean, what are you going to do when you have a favorite color that you run out of? Buy the whole set again just to get that one coat? It's not practical. But these are available open stock online from both Jerry's Artorama and DickBlick.com. You may be able to get them at other locations, but those are the two that I checked. The only real con I found to these is that they're not super light fast. 33 of them rank below a 5.6. For me, on the blue wool scale, anything below a 5.6, I don't want to use in my own work unless it's something I'm just going to make prints out of. With these, 33 were below a 5.6, but 39 of them were light fast, so that's good. Now, Derwent, I know, tends to test their pencils in dry form, so I'm not sure how those numbers would be affected once water is added. So if you're a professional artist, that would be something to consider. Now, on the flip side, just like ink tents, I can use these and make prints of them and not worry about it. They photograph beautifully. I had no trouble getting a really good photo of the lionfish that I'm going to be demonstrating here. So if you're looking for a medium that you can get something done very, very quickly that's going to photograph beautifully for prints, this it, even if you're a professional, could be a very good choice for you. If you're looking for a watercolor pencil that has good pigmentation, but you don't want to invest in some of the more expensive sets that are more light fast, this again might be a good way for you to get started. And the colors blend so beautifully that you don't have to get the full set of 72 if you want to try them. You can get a smaller set and still get a really good feel for what these pencils would be like. Can you tell I loved them? I sound like a walking advertisement now. I just get excited when I like things. If 
with your supporters over on Patreon. I have the almost two hour version of this tutorial available for you now, complete with voiceover, so make sure to head over and check that out. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, every week I upload a new one to two hour, actually sometimes they've been three hours, I've had some really long videos lately. I upload a new video every single week. There are over 150 available for you right now. That is a lot of videos you get instant access to for as little as $4 a month, plus some other bonuses. You can head over there and check that out. Now let's get on to this demonstration. For this one, I'm working on Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. As I lay the pencil down, I'm not pushing very hard. And you'll see as I add water, the color is going to be much, much more saturated when wet than it was when it was dry. So be aware of that. Make sure you're testing these on another piece of paper before you get onto your project because they are going to look very different once water is added. You wanna have an idea of what to expect. In the drawing that I started with, I've got water soluble graphite for my background because I wasn't sure how much of that I was going to go by. I thought I would be a little bit more controlled, but once I started, I realized I like this looser look better. And I'm really glad that I had gone with the water soluble graphite for that background because it just blends in with the pencil. You can't see that it was ever there. For the lionfish himself, I used a regular graphite pencil, but looking back, if I were to do this again, I wouldn't do that. I would just go water soluble graphite everywhere because I, I was afraid that these pencils were going to, to make a mess, that I was going to make the same mess that I have previously when using regular watercolor paint, and I didn't. It was very, it was pretty easy to control. So I think I would be safe to go with a water-soluble graphite for the lionfish as well. And the reason that I do that is that way I don't have any graphite lines showing through. Most of these get hidden in the end of painting, but I would prefer, there are a few areas where I can still see it, and definitely in the future I'm just going to stick with water-soluble graphite for everything. I'm using a really light hand. You do not need to push very hard with this. And when you're working with any sort of water soluble pencil, whether it be ink tents or watercolor pencil, you don't want to push too hard too early on. What happens is parts of that pencil, the pigment just sticks to the paper too much and it doesn't blend out as nicely with water. So by keeping a really light hand, it just, it dissolves better. You get a softer end look. And you can, of course, layer on top. If you want more pigment, you can keep layering more layers on top of it. Just don't push hard as you're doing that. It's easy to think, well, it'll be darker if I push hard. Yeah, but it's not going to blend quite as nicely. And I'm using a few different brushes. I'm trying a watercolor brush for some of this. I actually ended up preferring the Teclon bristle brushes for blending the majority of this later on. I felt I had a little bit more control, and I liked that better for blending out the pencils. It helped to get rid of more of that grainy, gritty look. Now here, the pigment is decent, but I wanted it to be more bold, a lot darker. And so once I dried it, I can go on top of it. You just have to keep in mind that none of these layers are completely permanent. It does stain the paper. It's not like you can lift it completely, but it, whatever color I'm putting on top here is going to blend a bit with the color that's underneath because they will lift some. So it, it basically reactivates the previous layers. But in doing that, I can build up until I get this nice, deep color saturation. Remember, whenever you're working with watercolor pencils, start, or and it's the same with ink tints. You want to start a little bit lighter than you think you want to go. It's a lot easier to darken things up than it is to lighten them up. Although, being the nature of watercolor, it's easier to lighten up a watercolor mistake than it would be with, with ink tints. And I, I keep comparing them with ink tints because it's so similar in the way that you're going to apply it. Move that final painting over so we can work on the other side now. Same thing, just keeping a very light hand. And I'm using the side of the pencil a lot so that I've got more surface area of the pencil touching the paper, which moves it along very quickly. And this was a very fast medium to work in. I loved it. You're able to get this nice soft look in the background or you can go through and do a lot of detail. It's very versatile in that. Layering some of my purples into my blues there. Then going over it with the water. And I did try at one point, I took the pencil and I wanted to see what would happen if I went with a pencil on top of wet paper. And I'll show you when I get to that point again. But when I did that, I quickly realized that didn't look good right there. That little blue smudge, I ended up with these squiggle lines that didn't blend out well. Now when I do squiggle lines, I'm basically just scribbling everywhere else. You can see all of my pencil strokes. All of those blended out beautifully, way, way better than I was expecting. I was really excited about that. I could be 
totally messy, go through this very quickly. I'm not worrying about the direction that the pencil is moving in. I can be super sloppy and it all blended out nice and smooth. Doing the same thing with the bottom corner and I ended up going a few layers or a few times over this bottom corner to really darken up quite a bit with blues and purples. So my initial color, a lot of this was done with black, but I went on top of it with blue and it gave me the, the end result was this really nice rich blue color that was very, very deep. Blending that out. And again, see how, look at how different that looks. Make sure you've tested this on another piece of paper so you have a, a pretty good idea of what colors are going to look like once water has been added. You may want to make yourself a little color chart that will show you what the pencils look like dry and what each pencil looks like wet. And these are all listed really clearly on the pencils themselves. You can easily see what color everything is, which is very nice. They're very easy to read. Then drying that, getting that paper right back down into shape. I've got it taped down along the edge on that wood board with masking tape. That's just regular masking tape there. Add a couple of more layers, get these colors a bit more rich. And see how that color saturation, I can just keep hyping it up by layering on top of layering. And it blends so smoothly because it does reactivate those layers below it. So moving on to the face, these pencils did a really good job with teeny tiny detail. I was really happy about that. And I just used a much smaller brush when blending those out. And here I mostly stuck with Taclon bristle brushes. The watercolor brushes were just too soft to get the kind of clean edges that I was trying to get here. They're a little bit harder to control and for this I really liked the Taclon bristle. I'm using some flats and some filberts for this. Little teeny tiny details in there. Now for blending, I blended out all of my base layers. My first layers of this were all completely blended out with the watercolor pen or water on the brush. But once I got to my final layers, some of those details I just left with the pencils themselves. My reference photo, and those of you over on Patreon, you have access to this reference photo on that post there. This was one of our monthly Patreon reference photos from I think last year, the year before, a while ago, but this one is available to you over there. This reference photo was actually very basic, very boring. The, the fish was brown and white. There wasn't really any purple, blue. Those were not colors that were really reflecting on him. He was against a solid black background. And he didn't have a lot of colors there. And for him, I really wanted to play with all of the rainbow colors in this set. Another color there to darken up. I, I mentioned earlier, I went over this quite a few times to really get that area dark so that that tail completely stood out. Some of that I'm going over it with a dark indigo blue and some of it with black. I'll go back and forth several times until I get as much pigment as I want on there. But I'm going to really play with the colors here, with purples, pinks, peach colors, tons and tons of colors that I used on this guy. Don't feel like you have to stick with your reference photo all the time. If I had in this case, it would have been a bit boring. It would have just been white and brown. And this was a good one because you remember whenever you're painting anything that has a lot of white, white is going to be reflective of the color around it. And in this case, I changed the background. He's not up against a black background, so he's not just going to be those gray tones in my original reference photo. He's up against the purples and blues, so I'm going to reflect that on the fish. It's not that lionfish are these colors. It's that the white of the fish, the white of anything, is going to reflect colors around it. And then I'm just over, you know, playing that up more, overdoing it from what that would have been. I'm just drying each section as I move on. You can let the different areas air dry, but especially large areas like the underside of the fish there, if I let it dry on its own, it may not dry completely back into shape. The hair dryer, the heat of that helps pull that paper back into its original shape. If you're having trouble with the pencils, and no matter what type of pencils you're using, whether it be colored pencil, watercolor, ink tents, try different types of paper. You may like one way more than another. And just because one artist likes one type of paper, it doesn't mean it's the only one. You may like a different one better. It doesn't mean one is right or wrong. It's just a matter of personal preference. But try different papers out because you may think that you're having a trouble 
problems with the pencil, you just don't like the medium, and it may just be the pen, the paper, not the pencil at all. Now with this guy, I really wanted to keep a slightly looser feel than I typically do. I think that's one thing that you'll see me do with watercolor pencils versus using ink tents or colored pencils. I'm probably not going to try and make every little thing as tight and as clean as I do with those. Certain areas I'm going to keep tight and clean, the, the edge is very smooth. But if you look at the spines along his back, see how messy those are? I actually really liked how that came out, how that blended. It was a little bit looser the way that it blended into the water or the paper than what I typically get with say ink tents. And so that's something that I think you're going to see me do a lot more with watercolor paper or pencils keep a slightly looser feel. I really liked how that came out. Now this portion here is in the live stream. I'll have a card pop up so you can check that out if you wanna see in real time. But we did that while talking about art in general for that video. So again, that card will pop up. More little details. Now this white pencil, oh my gosh, was I in love. I did not expect that pencil to be very opaque. I was already coming up with backup plans for areas I wanted to be bright or white, whether I be using white acrylic paint or gouache or a gel pen, something else. I was planning to do something else to get my whites light enough or even the white ink tense block. I had a lot of backup plans for pulling brights back out. I didn't need them. All I used on this entire project were the Derwent watercolor pencils. That white was so nice and opaque. It pulled out colors or white bright highlighted areas so beautifully. Even when I blended out with water, it still kept its opacity. Which again, I didn't really expect because the white ink tense, that doesn't stay super opaque if you blend it out with water. I usually don't use water with that one. The white ink tense block, that, that does. Once you add water with that or mix, paint it on with water, that gets very, very opaque. But the pencil, not so much. So I was expecting this to be closer to the ink tense pencil with as far as opacity went. It wasn't. It was so much more opaque. And Oh, I was in love. I mean, as soon as I started using it, it was beautiful. It wasn't as white as what the white paper would be. It's not that opaque, but it was still very, very opaque. I'm just going to keep repeating the word opaque over and over, apparently. I really need to expand my vocabulary. Again, just little details, working one small area at a time. It's just so much easier to tackle when you break it down into one little zone and then move on to the next. And on something like this, where you've got this much detail, it can be really overwhelming when you look at it. It's just so much. And so you might feel that you're hesitant to tackle a project like this because it's just, it looks like it's too hard because there's so much detail. Here's the thing, something like this with this much detail, it is easier to hide mistakes. It is easier to make this look good than let's say a Moorish idol, a fish that, that would be, for those of you familiar with Finding Nemo, that would be Gil in Finding Nemo. A fish like that is much more simple, much easier to paint, but it's not as easy to make it look this good. This is way easier because of all the detail, because of the busyness. Yes, it takes more, a lot longer. It is more time consuming, but if you've got the patience to do all of this detail, all of this little detail hides mistakes. It hides little things that weren't blended great or the edges weren't super smooth. It hides a lot. So as long as you're a patient person, don't be hesitant to try something this busy just because it looks too hard. The only thing hard about it at that point is just having the patience to complete it. But this medium was so fast to work in, much faster than, say, regular colored pencils. By I mean, it's not even comparable at that point. I'm using the water brush by Derwent. This one, the back end of the brush is filled with water and then you blend out that way. And that worked really well with these pencils too. They weren't big enough to use for say the background, but for smaller areas, that was a really convenient, pen convenient brush. I used that for a lot of this. Now I had a lot of fun just, I used so many colors out of the set. Just look how beautiful those are. I intentionally chose a product or product project that I could play with tons and tons of colors. Same thing, let's say if I were to paint another giraffe like I did for the Smart Art Box one, I would do the same thing. I would play around with the colors. It, it's just so much fun. 
pulling in extra purples and blues that really weren't there in the photo. And what I do when it gets into a section like this, into a lot of this fin, it feels, it's just a mess. It, you get lost easily. Break it up or look at it as abstract shapes. Flip your work upside down if you need to. That can make it a lot easier. But work in little areas. Copy what you see on that reference photo, but look at it as abstract shapes. If I look at any one of these areas as a fin, my brain looks at that and goes, nope. That's not what that looks like, and it tries to change from that reference photo. I mean, obviously, I'm changing the color, but the actual shape, I want to go pretty close. It doesn't need to be exact, but I do want to go pretty close. So turning your work upside down can help, but breaking it up into the little pieces and look at it as abstract shapes instead of a fin. Same thing. Let's say you're painting a rose. Don't look at it as a whole flower. Break it up into little abstract shapes. Each individual flower petal I would break up into an abstract shape. And this fin actually felt very much like that. It was a lot like painting rose petals where they're kind of wavy a little bit the edge is kind of jagged very very similar in that but if you can get your head to just look at the shapes and stop trying to see a fin that'll make it easier and you can see i'm basically working one of these little spiny guys at a time blending the light on the back from a really light orange kind of a pumpkin orange color into deeper purples as it moves down each of those brown stripes on the fish when you're working on something it's easy to look at it and go okay the stripes are brown i'm just going to paint them in solid brown or shade them in solid brown look closely at your reference photo are there highlights is it really one solid color i've seen this before where people will let's say paint a tiger and think okay i've got the perfect color for the tiger's fur it's this sort of pumpkin orange brown orange whatever and they'll try to use that color everywhere but your work will end up looking very flat if you do that pay attention to your highlights pay attention to your values that is going to make your work look much more realistic even if you're painting a pink blue and purple lionfish And looking at the shapes as abstract shapes and just copying that reference photo is really important here because part of that fin I was, I didn't realize it was almost a webbed area where it was connected. I wasn't seeing it that way. I thought they were separated. And if I would have let my brain take over and do what it thought was there, it wouldn't have looked right. When I backed away from it, and because I did copy the reference photo as I saw it, when I backed away from it and saw that all of that was webbed and how it connected, because I did copy that photo, it all came together and looked so much better than if I had let my brain do what it thought it should do. Because my brain was saying, this is wrong. This doesn't make sense. I don't know if something's wrong with my photo. I don't know what it was, but I went ahead and trusted it copied the shapes as they were and in the end it all worked together but looking at it as an abstract shape was the only way that was going to happen in this area i'm going to make a little bit darker it's in the shadow and a lot of these highlights if i overblend, it's okay i can use the white pencil to pull out highlights and you'll see me do that later on too so in love with that white pencil Look at the way that it pulls out highlights when I do that on some of these fins. And you do have a lot of watercolor artists are more traditional in that they, you're not supposed to use white. They, you're supposed to just let the white of the paper show through. I'm not one of those. I only care what my end result is. I don't care how I get there. So... Um, you will have a lot of watercolor artists who may not want to use that pencil, but I personally absolutely loved the results that I was getting with it. And even here where I'm not finished, you can really see how saturated these colors are and why I fell so in love with it. It didn't, I don't remember how many days I spent on this, but it really wasn't as many as I would have expected on something that had this much detail. That is one thing that the watercolor and ink tense pencils both are so nice in comparison to working in, in traditional colored pencils is that you get work done very quickly with these. The way that they blend out with water, you get so much coverage so quickly. The 
this area, I'm just loosely going by the reference photo, making sure that the fin, that those lines are curved in the right direction. But I didn't sit there and count, okay, this many spots, this many lines, as long as it's close, no one's going to know the difference. Well, those of you guys with the reference photo, you'll know, but no one else will know. You can see I'm using a light, uh, slightly larger brush for that section there. That was a Taquan Bristled Filbert. One of the things that I really liked with this, so this was a, a little bit different than Ink Tense, where I kept blending, let's say, around the tail where I wanted to go darker and darker. I could easily blend that out. The way that it blended into the color next to it was really nice. Very, very easy to do because it would reactivate the color underneath and just blend into it. So you got more, a much softer end look. I've got to darken up this fin quite a bit to push the one in front of it out to give you that three-dimensional look. I need to get a lot of those darks in there. If it's not dark enough, then the fin that's that's coming out on the side of his body there, that one will just blend into the mess of purple and magenta since I have so many colors and so much busyness there. It's very, very important that my values be right, that I get that dark enough to push the one in front forward. Drying that, you can see the paper pull back into shape as I dry that with the hair dryer. And this is what I was talking about with that white pencil. Look at these highlights, how well that shows up. And that's just the white watercolor pencil. This is one I will definitely be ordering more. That's a pencil I'm going to need a lot of. And this whole process was just so enjoyable with these pencils. The blending, the color saturation, being able to get as much detail as I wanted. I had no trouble getting nice crisp edges or soft edges, depending on what it was that I wanted. Really, really nice medium for this type of look. You will definitely be seeing me use watercolor pencils a lot more. And that white pencil shows up really well, even over the dark areas. Can you tell I'm a little bit obsessed with that pencil? It may need to take a restraining order out against me. I'm, the obsession is real. There is my finished painting. I definitely recommend these pencils. I think that they are fairly inexpensive considering how good the performance was. I never felt like I was fighting to get them to do anything I wanted, whether it be color, saturation, detail, anything. Anything I was trying to get them to do, they did beautifully. So I'm definitely in love. I will be reviewing some more colored pencils or watercolor pencils coming up very soon, but the bar is set pretty high for me with these pencils. I honestly put off trying these pencils for so long because I thought I needed to learn how to use watercolor pencils first. I apparently didn't. Like my first try was so much fun and I kind of, I seriously am kicking myself that I waited so long thinking, oh, I need to take the time to learn how to use them first. Just do a project with them. You can learn as you go. I had so much fun with these. If you guys have tried these pencils or any other watercolor pencils, let me know in the comments what your favorites are because I'll probably end up buying them and trying them all out. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's around, has an orange arrow going to it. If you click on that, it'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos and live streams. Although YouTube's been really bad about notifying people, like worse than normal. So you may wanna sign up for my email newsletter because I always update you with what's going on, any new videos and live streams in that as well. And that link is also right there, right next to the subscribe button. So, you know, maybe do both. Subscribe, sign up for the email newsletter. I don't send spam, I promise. I mean, unless you consider art motivation, art tips, and tutorial spam. Then I send spam every week.